Hello everybody, my name is Zoe Austin and today we will be discussing about the uh, brain tumor segmentation with uh, deep neural network which is the part of an individual group of presentation in a software engineering course. So we will be discussing about the uh, fully automatic brain tumor segmentation methods based on a uh, deep neural network and we will be exploring different uh, sort of architecture and its efficiency uh, we will specifically specifically focus on uh, glioblastomas tumors and uh, in order to improve its um, growth rate estimation, improve the diagnostics and treatment planning. So as you can see the gliomas are uh, very difficult to identify manually. So there are like uh, very thousands of uh, brain tumor cases in the US, so in order to uh, automate the brain tumor segmentation and do the fast computation, we are using the deep neural network uh, method. So here you can see the figure of convolutional neural network, uh, which we will be implementing in our method. We will be using four different kind of input images, uh, they are T1, T2, T1C and here. So in the figure you can see a single convolutional layer block showing comp computations of a single feature map. The input patch here is uh, 7 by 7 which is uh, convolved with a series of kernels uh, which are 3 by 3 followed by the max out operation and uh, max pooling. So in order to compute a feature map in convolutional layer, it consists of <coughs> three steps, convolutional of kernels, nonlinear activation function, and uh, max pooling. So in the first step, uh, the convolutional of uh, kernels, uh, O is uh, computed as shown in the figure, where XR is the rth input channel and WSR is the sub kernel for that channel which is convolved which is convolved and then added to bias term BS and then in order to obtain features that are nonlinear transformations of the input an element wise nonlinearity is applied to the result of kernel convolution so here we have used uh, rectified linear functions which are also called values and then we apply the max pooling operation. Uh, this operation consists of taking the maximum feature value over sub windows within each feature map. Now let's uh, discuss about the uh, architectures that uh, have been applied in this event segmentation method. The first one is a uh, two pathway architecture. In this architecture, uh, it is made up of uh, two streams, a pathway with smaller 7x7 seven seven receptive fields, and another one is larger 13x13 13 13 receptive fields. Here, these refer this, uh, streams uh, we refer as the local pathway and the global pathway, respectively. Now let's uh, discuss about different architecture which is a uh, cascaded architecture. In this cascaded architecture there are uh, different types of cascaded architecture. Those are input concatenation, uh, local pathway concatenation and uh, pre-output concatenation. In the first input concatenation architecture we provide the first uh, convolutional network ne networks output directly as input to the second uh, CNN which you can see on the figure here similarly on uh, local pathway concatenation architecture we move up one layer in the local pathway and perform concatenation to its first hidden layer in the second convolutional neural network which you can see over here and similarly, in the pre-output concatenation, we move to the very end of the second convolutional 
neural network and perform concatenation right before its output layer so this is what you can see over here in the figure now let's talk about the training by interpreting the output of the convolutional network as a model for the distribution over segmentation labels a natural training criteria is to maximize the probability of all labels in our training set or to minimize the negative log probability for each labeled train brain in order to do this we follow a stochastic gradient descent approach by repeatedly selecting labels at a random subset of patches within each brain computing the average negative log probabilities for this mini batch of patches and performing a gradient descent step on the CNN's parameters now in the two phase training what we do in the first phase is that we construct our patches data set such that all labels are equiprobable and then in the second phase uh, we account for the unbalanced nature of the data and retrain only the output layer with a more representative distribution of the labels in this way we get the best of both worlds most of the capacity is used in a balanced way to account for the diversity in all of the classes while the output probabilities are calibrated correctly to the retraining of the output layer now in order to train our cascading architecture we start by training the two path CNN with the two phase stochastic crash and descent procedure described previously now here I have shown the implement implementation details of this print tumor segmentation where they have used the pylon to library which is open source machine learning library specialized in uh, deep learning methods and to talk about the pre-processing very minimal pre-processing was applied like uh, the 1% uh, highest and lowest intensities are removed then uh, bias correction are applied to T1 and T1C modality and uh, the post processing uh, includes a simple method uh, based on connected components was implemented to remove flat blobs which might appear in the prediction due to bright corners of the brain close to the skull since uh, this method is applied the training uh, takes only about 3 minutes for the two path CNN model on uh, NVIDIA Titan black card uh, GPU and uh, the implementation produced a segmentation in 25 seconds for brain layers which turns out to be 45 times faster than the, the other method now here you can see the data set uh, of the images this one is the T1 image and this one is T2 T1 enhance and this is the player so here you can see all of the, the combined image where uh, the edema enhanced tumor necrosis and non-enhanced tumor are separated so the necrosis is the poor part of the tumor which are to be segregated so this talks about the experiments and results uh, on quantitative evaluation and calculation so here you can see the performance of two path uh, CNN architecture with uh, other methods so in this we have found out that the two path is the fastest and efficient one so uh, in conclusion that the this implementation of different architecture and its impact on output efficiency of two path uh, compared the traditional method that uh, this is very highly efficient and the total time taken is just 25 seconds 